Tim is to go. It's Thursday morning and I can't feel my fingers, but I'm burning through the numbness with rage for the scabs outside. And on his way in, that jumped up new thing in PE, only here on work experience, stopped to say to me, oh, come on, Janine, it's not 1983. Picket lines mean nothing but frumpy faced lefties waving copies of the Guardian over bins. And then he went in. I could be his mother. Stuff that won't be his grandmother. So still on this line, I've drawn between them and us, I'm making a mental list of all the people you should have heard of before you were allowed to step foot in the public sector. Arthur Scargill, Harvey Milk, Rosa Parks, Emily Pankhurst, God, even bloody Joan of Arc. And I set a picture of you, Mr. Gove, as the background on my phone, all pressed up and pouted at the screen, glaring your dead eyes at me. Because there were sometimes on Friday's period five with 45 minutes left to go and not one member of year 11 has taken off their coats and they don't seem to know they've got six weeks left until their final exams. And this really is their last chance. They have bulged it up every step until here and when I try and engage them in rational discussion about this problem, they say they don't care. Why would they? I don't blame them. Not when you lot in power have got to their families three generations ago. Divided and conquered, belittled and humiliated until no family on that street was left with work or a pension or one ounce to get up and go. It is on those days, Mr Gove, when I remove myself from the classroom, take a minute in the station recovered alone and scream through my teeth your stupid face on my phone. <laughs> Four levels of fucking progress. And if it was just this one class, then it would be a breeze. But this is five lessons a day, 325 pairs of... That is five lessons a day, 15 classes a week. That is 325 pairs of eyes that I have to drag through your Dark Ages data curriculum. And some of those are bright eyes. They are keen as hot chips and they are a pleasure to teach. But the ones whose eyes are glazed in the start, they're falling asleep at the front of my class. And well, Michael, I could sing and I could dance. But trying to get a kid to find a list of every monarch since the 14th century entertaining would tax every member of One Direction, surrounded by flamethrowers projecting the faces of Henry VIII's wives into the sky. I mean, we could use our people premium funding to get Harry Styles in. Pay for him to have your more patriotic account of World War I tattooed across both arse cheeks. It wouldn't make anyone feel more enthusiastic about teaching this. Thank you for the Bibles, Mr. Gove, but I don't think it's God we need right now. <laughs> I would like you to stop opening the doors of my profession onto unqualified graduates who are unsure of their prospects and can no longer afford that self-discovery voyage to Bali, so I've decided on a whim they'll turn their hands to teaching. I mean, how hard can it be? And I wouldn't mind if they had ever stepped foot in a classroom before. I would help them carry their desk charts and optimistic wall planners through the door, but when shell-shocked war heroes are being told that the road to recovery is two paracetamol on Class 10B, it is no wonder that our headlines seem to follow similar themes recently. I would like Hayley, whose dad incidentally walked out on her for the tenth time last week to get one ounce of credit for her speaking and listening. Spelling has never been her strong point and sometimes she struggles to strengthen her argument with structure and paragraphs, but if you just gave her more time to look over her coursework and redraft, she might actually stand a chance. It is not cheating, Mr. Gove, it is editing. I am sure War and Peace would have been a very different book without at least one glance over. <laughs> and I know your mates grew up learning Latin and are worried if us on the ground don't start drilling it in, then it will become extinct, a Cinderella language of the elite left in a history book on the shelf. When you have got to get year seven, who collectively already speak 11 languages to grasp hold of Spanish and to get to grips with the perfect tense in six weeks when you only see them for four hours a fortnight. Yes, it was not meant to be nine, but the lower level ones are to English and maths intervention and the gifted and, gifted and talented are having a raising aspiration speech about getting into Cambridge, so you were left with the ones in the middle, sitting there, looking at you know that they are nothing more than distinctly average. It is hard work, Mr. Gove. I wish you could know. Because I am trying to empathise with that chip on your shoulder that you never made it to eat and you never got to <laughs> learn the slang or chase the new boys down the corridor whipping them with wet towels. I am sorry that the only incriminating photo of you in the media wasn't with a prostitute on your lap and coke up your nose, but on a picket line in Aberdeen with other beardy normal looking blokes. I am seeing things from your sides. And honestly, I sympathise. And I'll try seeing them from mine. The sun's going down. 
leaving the school in darkness, and we're going home, passing cars, carrying passengers who are done for the day, can put their work out their heads, open a bottle, talk to their partners. We set up marking, give our own kids enough attention to fend off the guilt, then open our planners, work out who is not making progress fast enough. Write a list and action plans for each kid who just doesn't seem to get it Despite lessons to suit every learning style Revision sheets, summaries, break time meetings, resources, catch-ups, one-to-ones, phone calls home And finally, there's a last straw That clip from Blackadder, just to try and get them to remember what the trenches were for If, despite all of this, they still don't get it Not only do we feel like we have failed, but we don't go up the pay scale we don't get that bit extra we were going to put towards the holiday and you probably think we don't deserve that anyway but you just try doing this seven days a week, 18 hours a day. Yes, the weekends we're not teaching but with the workload it feels much the same. And if, after 40 years of this, you want to take my pension away, leaving me no option but to carry on till I'm 78 when in bed, when I barely know my own name until eventually I drop dead in front of class 7A. <laughs> well, Mr. Go, even if I am the only one on this picket line, I'll be the one standing in your way. Thank you.